This video is from my course, AWS Lambda, A Practical Guide. If you enjoy this video, please check out the course link in the description section below. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be doing a demonstration on using AWS Lambda power tuning to optimize your Lambda function, both in terms of cost and in terms of performance. So I'm over here on the GitHub page and we're just looking at the documentation for this tool. Uh, so this is an open source tool. It is available on GitHub. However, there are a couple different ways to deploy it. And I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways that I found uh, in a couple moments here when we do the demo. But just before we get into that, just want to take a look at how this thing is set up. Uh, so it turns out behind the scenes, this tool is using a step function to invoke your Lambda function with a variety of different memory settings. And then as you can see here, it runs it through the executor and then it cleans up those functions and then it'll analyze the log results based on the function execution time and the amount of memory used. And then it'll pump all that data into an optimizer where it'll generate a nice uh, PNG graph that we were looking at in the previous section that'll help you visualize the results and pick an option that's best for you. So you can come here and take a look at how, how power tuning works, but it's just basically kind of what we described in the previous section. You get a nice graph here that describes the relationship between the execution time and the cost, and you can pick the option that minimizes the duration and minimizes the cost in order to get the best bang for your buck. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. Now, the easiest way that I found to do this is by using the power tuning uh, serverless application here that's available at this website. It's serverlessrepo.aws.amazon.com. Uh, don't worry about getting this URL. I'll provide it in the notes section for this video. Now, this web page allows you to just deploy this application into your AWS account using that state machine in just one click. So it'll use a CloudFormation template and it'll deploy all the resources it needs. And then you can go to CloudFormation later to delete everything in one click. Um, so this really will be your source for reading about all the different options that are available to you. So you can see here um, in the input to the state machine, we're going to have to pass in a couple different parameters. The first one is your Lambda ARN. We're going to grab that from our function console page. And then the power values, these are the memory settings that you want to test it on. Uh, so 128 MB all the way up to 3008. Uh, you can put in as many as you want here if you want to do like even more granularity. So maybe something in between 128 and 256 uh, to get even more fine grain results. And then in addition, you also get the number of invocations at each memory power value. Uh, the input payload to the Lambda function, if you have something that reads off the input arguments, whether or not you want parallel invocation, which I suggest you to do so and to use as true. And then the strategy that you're trying to optimize for. There's three different ones. The first one is cost, the second one is balanced, and the third one is speed. Uh, so you can tinker around with these values to see what kind of results you get when using the different strategies. And there's a, a bunch of more documentation here that you can look at and describes a bunch of the different uh, settings that you could provide if you want to spend a little bit more time learning about this. But in our case, I want to go to the top here and click on the deploy button to get started launching the CloudFormation template, which is going to set up our state machine and allow us to test using the power tuning tool. I'm going to click on this button now. Now, assuming you're already logged in to your AWS account, you should be brought to this page. If you're not logged in, it'll just prompt you to do that. Uh, so you can see we get brought into the AWS Lambda section and it's asking us to create a function here and it's based on this source code and that's the, the GitHub repository that we were just looking at at the beginning of the video. So I'm just going to scroll down here and then these are the power values that it's going to set up. Uh, you can always change this stuff later so don't really worry about it. Uh, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to click on the acknowledge button because this application will create custom IAM roles and then we're going to go ahead and click on deploy in the bottom right. So this is going to launch that CloudFormation template, which is going to contain all the infrastructure uh, that it needs to set everything up. And this should take a couple minutes here. I'm just going to scroll up and down. Usually they give you a performance, not a performance, but a uh, progress indicator to tell you when. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, so if you scroll down here under resources, this should just be an output stream from CloudFormation. So I'm going to give this a few minutes to get all set up and I'll come back when everything is all done. All right, so after a couple minutes here, uh, everything was created successfully. Uh, in order to confirm that everything is all done, you can go up to the top and go to the deployment section, and then you could take a look here and see that it says create complete. So we are pretty much good to go in terms of testing our Lambda function. So before we go into the step function section of the console to actually test this thing out, we need to grab the ARN of our Lambda function itself. 
So I'm going to go over to the function section here. I'm just going to type in my Lambda function here, which is demo Lambda function. I'm going to click on this guy and we're going to copy the ARN by clicking on this little button here. So this is now copied to our clipboard. So now um, before we proceed, let's just take a look at the code that I have here that we're going to be testing out. So this is just a Python implementation of the Fibonacci sequence, uh, and it's just calculating the Fibonacci sequence of 25. So this, uh, if you're not already aware, it's a pretty computationally intense process. So this may have some interesting results in terms of our power tuning function, and I'm very curious to see what the suggested memory setting is going to be for us in this case. So let's go ahead and test this out in the next step. So we have that ARN copied. You can basically leave this page now. We're going to head over to the step function section now of the console. So I'm just going to type in step functions here in the top. And if you've never used step functions before, uh, just clicking on that, by the way, uh, step functions are an orchestration service that's offered by AWS, and they let you tie together multiple different Lambda functions. And um, the step function itself can hold state so that you can coordinate different steps in a workflow. Very, very useful in a whole bunch of different contexts. But it turns out behind the scenes, that's what uh, PowerTuner is using. And that's what we're going to utilize in this example here. So here we are in the step function console. I'm going to go ahead and click on this power tuning statement machine. This was the state machine that was created as part of that CloudFormation template here. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to go to start execution here because we need to provide um, the state machine with input uh, according to the documentation that we were looking at on that original application page. So I'm going to click on start execution here and we need to provide an input like you can see in this box here. So temporarily I'm just going to paste in my ARN here because that's what we need to provide in one of the arguments for the input. And then I'm going to go back to my tab on that documentation section for the application and I'm going to copy the input here that we need to provide. Um, and this is, of course, on that page with AWS Lambda Power Tuning, where we originally clicked on that deploy button. So I'm going back to the step function now. I'm going to paste in the arguments here. I'm also going to take my ARN for my Lambda function and put that into the Lambda ARN uh, field. And then from here, you have a couple different options. You can kind of keep the defaults just to test out the default power values. Or if you want a little bit more granular power values to test against, you can provide additional numbers here. So maybe 129, 130 megabytes, or maybe something in between 256 and 128. Uh, you can really test out many different options or as many different options as you please. But I'm just going to leave this as default. We're going to also leave it on the default strategy, which is cost as well, just to show you a little quick demonstration. So once you're satisfied with the options here, we're just going to go to the bottom right and click on start execution. And what's going to happen now, and, and the neat part about using step functions is that you get a nice visual indicator of what is happening in this workflow. So this is the workflow that is part of that power tuner. And you see things just change green and the green corresponds to the steps that get completed as part of our step function workflow. So you can see here it went through the initializer, then it went through the executor. This is the part where it actually runs our Lambda functions, then it cleans things up, then it analyzes the logs, and then it probably in this last step here just generates an output file for us to take a look at. Uh, so you can go ahead and click on the bottom one here for optimizer. And then you can go to, I believe it's step output. Yeah, there we go. So you get a link under visualization here. So all we have to do now to look at that graph is just to grab this link and go and paste it into, actually I'm going to do it in a different tab here. Uh, we can just paste that in and it should give us a nice little graph of what our power tuning results are. So if we take a look at this, we can see some interesting results. For this Fibonacci sequence of calculating the Fibonacci of 25, we can see here that if we're looking at the blue in terms of our cost, our cost dipped or its lowest point was around 512 megabytes. And it started to decrease from 256 and then it started to increase when it was changed to 1024. So our sweet spot is somewhere between 256 and 1024. And then if you're looking at the red line, which is our invocation time, the red line is just an expected kind of scenario. The more memory that you throw at the Lambda function, the more compute capacity it's going to have. However, there are diminishing returns. You can see when we went from 2048 to 3008, we got basically no improvement. We were running at 35 milliseconds here. And in the other one, we were at 34 milliseconds. And that's a really big jump. And when you look at the cost increase, it jumped by, I would say, a third of the cost. So obviously, it doesn't make sense to use 3008 in this case.
So based on this output, you can derive the, the correct value or the best value for you just by looking at the graph. I would say it's probably 512 in this case. However, what I would probably do in the next step is that I would go back to the step function and put in a bunch more values in between 512 and 1024 because it appears that the right value is probably going to be somewhere in here, which is in the middle. Uh, so that's how I would suggest to use power tuning. Uh, this is a very, very useful tool. I can't tell you how hard this used to be before. Uh, I actually wrote my own tool to do something very similar uh, as this tool back in the day. Um, but now all this stuff is widely available to you. It's open source. It's free to use. And I highly, highly suggest you use it to optimize your Lambda functions with the correct settings. So I hope you enjoyed this section. I'll see you in the next one.